Augmented reality, or AR, is the technology of projecting images, graphics, and videos over top of the real world, like in the movies. And it actually exists today, but most of what we have is pretty unimpressive because the holy grail of AR is of course not pointing your phone at stuff and seeing graphics pop up through your phone's camera on your screen. That much would be obvious to anyone who's ever tried to do that for longer than a couple of minutes during a stage demo. The Holy Grail is integrating it into something that can be worn comfortably and ideally discreetly. But while many companies, some working privately like Magic Leap and others beating a drum about it like Microsoft, are pursuing head-mounted AR, the current solutions are bulky and very expensive. A HoloLens will set you back three thousand US dollars. Enter Scrappy Upstart Eyeglass. These guys claim that their display tech solves some of the biggest issues with waveguide AR displays and that they can do it at one tenth of the cost. And I'm actually about to get my first taste of their prototype. Before I actually try this thing though, let's do a little bit of background. Who are these guys? So Sam Ewan actually worked at Microsoft from 2012 to 2016 on the original HoloLens team as a senior hardware engineer. So obviously he believes in AR and even HoloLens to some degree. It's an amazing piece of technology that uses cameras to track the environment around the user, letting him or her interact with the digital content. The problem with it though, is that the screen is relatively small with about a 32 degree horizontal field of view. Not to mention that the color is inaccurate, white in particular is very difficult to display, and the waveguide type displays that are built into the lenses in front of each eye are about $2,000 total. That is two thirds of the total cost of the base model on the two displays alone. So by contrast, Eyeglass believes that their tech could get closer to about $10 per eye or 20 bucks, 1% of the cost, which would make it easier to build an affordable device around it. So it uses what's called off-axis imaging. Instead of putting a light source perpendicular to your eye, so you're, you're looking into a display directly with a backlight behind it, it actually puts the display and the backlight above the eye so you can actually see that if I flip it up like this, and then it reflects it off a curved piece of glass. This makes it see-through, kind of like uh, if you were wearing sunglasses, which means that you can see the world around you. It also gives you a field of view that is only limited by the size of the lenses. So our prototype here apparently offers an 80 degree field of view, and it can use either a normal LCD display or even an OLED display, or I mean, who knows, uh, I guess a future display technology is not out of the question. Okay, so this is the part where I finally get to put it on and Sam's gonna kind of help me with the demo here. So uh, just a normal Velcro yeah, strap. It's very 3D printed at this point, guys, so we need to be very careful with it. Uh -huh. uh, okay. So did you, what do you saw? So it looks like the image is probably about I'd say about 10 feet in front of me right now. So now when I have content running on it, it is obviously a harder to see through it. But like I can read my teleprompter right now. I can interact with Pella. But if I focus on that image that's about 12 feet in front of me, things start to kind of fade away. Yes. So without anything running on it, it's about as dark as I'd say my, my pretty dark sunglasses. Kind of weird it doesn't um because it's like sitting so close to your eyes it doesn't feel like there's two lenses in front of you so right now i can really see the curvature of the glass like i can see a curve to the top of it a curve to the bottom and then it gets kind of like the shape gets kind of cut off here but what sam explained is that really any technology any display technology that relies on a on a curved piece of glass is going to need processing done ahead of time to kind of pre-distort the image so that it ends up having those nice, uh, those square corners that you would expect. 
Blacks and really dark colors are a little bit tough because those are obviously the display to the best of its ability being off, meaning that, that you see right through it. But white is actually surprisingly opaque. I mean, these are the same challenges that you run into with something like a, a projector, for example. That's why a dark room would be ideal. I mean, trying this in the dark, that would be trippy. Actually, can we kill the lights? Now that is really cool. Like if I was on a nighttime flight or something in a dark environment, like I could be convinced I'm looking at a really nice projector. So there's no reason then that you couldn't have effectively like a ceiling mounted giant display. So you guys are quoting this at what, about 120 inches at 12 feet ish? Right. I would say it's probably twice or even, even higher than the typical VR device in terms of angular resolution. Right. So I did guess right, it is 1080p per eye, but we're stretching it over a relatively small area compared to a VR headset, so it actually looks pretty fine. And it should be noted that Eyeglass has no intention of turning this prototype into a fully functional AR headset. What they're really focused on is developing the core technology, which is projecting the display into the viewer's eyes. So like on the business side, you guys are more looking for partners to take this display tech and then use whatever resolution they want yes. and maybe external tracking cameras if they're into that right. or whatever. You guys don't care. Yes. You're focused on these displays up here, the curvature of the lens, and then all the software that goes along with that. Right. Interesting. One thing I'm also noticing sitting here and using this is that compared to VR, even though the image is moving around, it's more like a uh, it's more like a virtual screen sitting in front that moves around. Like I'm not getting motion sick. Right. Why is that? Uh, because you can see this stable background. So it's another trick of the brain that's helping with motion sickness. Now you get the best ex watching experience actually when even like you stabilize your head on something, and the screen is very still because otherwise it's, it's pretty easy to get distracted by things, the real world moving behind it. But whenever you do move, you do lose that immersion for a little bit. Like it's, it's not as immersive as VR, and I don't, I don't foresee a future where it ever would be. But even though you lose that immersion a little bit, this serves a purpose because it also allows your brain and your eyes to work together to see the objects that are fixed around you and keep you from getting disoriented. So, so this is a purely 3D printed, serves no purpose other than to yep. try the display tech thing. In order for me to see the content, I have to get, you to get down, huh? about here. Yeah. Like wow. if you were watching porn right now, I wouldn't know until probably about here that right. there's like naked bodies. <laughs> Let's try something here because I have, uh, actually I have a Victoria's Secret. Uh, <laughs> So, okay. Let's give it, give it a shot. Can you see the content? Let's Tell me what's happening. Yeah. That's definitely breasts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so from there, yes. But if I'm any further away, I would have to be about here. Brandon, what, what, you, what you watching at work there? Wow, I don't know. This is pretty cool though. What are they wearing? What the hell? <laughs> that looks like she's wearing like part of a trash like bag. Well, it's better than the whole trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Pretty neat though, hey? Yeah, like, uh, it's actually surprisingly good. Like, so I have to get, to see what you're watching, I have to get about here. Huh. Colton, you want to try it? It's pretty cool. I would love to. <laughs> it's AR. I just want to know, I don't want to ruin it. Whoa. <laughs> what do you saw? Hey, yo. <laughs> oh, hey there. How you doing? <laughs> you're very bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Like, it's like a good image, too. Yeah, it's a video help. Yeah. Wow, and I can actually see the screen, like, really well. Too. So you could be working while you watch the Victoria's Secret Oh, this is perfect. Show. That's awesome. Hey. I'm banning these. Oh. These, these aren't allowed uh, in the office. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> no, it's really cool. Like, I do like the image quality. Like, even compared to something like a... Like a Vibe like or cool? whatever. It's, it's crisp. Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, the way that they envision people using this 
is mobile entertainment. So you have privacy because nobody can see what you're watching unless they got like right under by your chin and, and looked up at your displays. Um, the ability to have a bigger screen for entertainment on like a train or a bus or the plane. So this would be an alternative to listening to podcasts, for example. Uh, they foresee a use case where you could walk around on the street playing games or watching YouTube videos, but then without your head, either buried in a phone or, I mean, much more dangerous. I've never seen anyone doing this, but inside a VR headset, that would be super stupid. Or even just doing chores around the house, like uh, watching a movie while you vacuum. I do have to say, I haven't personally witnessed the demand for these use cases yet. In all my travels, I have yet to see someone using a VR headset on a plane. So, uh, 